The families of the victims of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School massacre had the chance to confront Nicholas Cruz during his sentencing hearing earlier this week. The families of each of the 17 victims, they address the court in powerful and painful ways. So for today's Talk Back segment, we wanted to know what you thought about those victim impact statements. Still with me, certified domestic violence expert and criminal defense attorney Marie Pereira and appellate and trial attorney Matthew Barhoma. All right, guys, our first comment comes from Bina. Bina says, you all should listen to the victim impact statement from Victoria Gonzalez. She has really understood what is most important. I salute her for her brave and compassionate heart. She does not excuse any of NC's deeds, but she does not let herself feed up with hate. Hate leads only to hate. And that is what this impact statement shows. I hope that they'll find peace. And that kind of goes to what we were talking about here, Matthew. Um, I, that young lady, and that, we played her during that last segment, uh, really just struck me as a young lady. The way she approached the situation, um, it was needed on a lot of levels because, again, I felt the same way. That I, I felt bad. I understood the hate, but it certainly was difficult to listen to over and over. Yeah, and you know, I, I was really appreciative that she shared the story, okay? I mean, that, that, that provided a lot of context. It also um, showed, you know, uh, 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 that maybe this there was stuff that was going on with this particular defendant from long ago. She, even she had recognized it, right? So um, I thought that her victim impact statement was impactful and it was insightful. Honestly, I think it was, um, I guess you could say it reconciled a lot of things. So um, I was thankful for it as well. All right, our next comment comes from Pamela. Pamela says, I am appalled at the conduct of the families giving impact statements. I understand this was a horrible crime, but calling him a monster, creature, and wishing him prison justice was unnecessary, as was the parent who berated the defense attorneys. There is a difference between justice and revenge. Also, the judge was one of the worst I have ever uh, seen preside over a trial. Um, a lot going on there. Uh, Marie, I'll let you pick. There's three or four different issues to address there. Uh, you can pick whichever one you want to comment on. The judge, uh, the vitriol uh, by the parents, and I guess there was one other as well. I think the judge overdosed on the empathy towards mm -hmm. the family. I understand she's a human being, but she has to be unbiased. And throughout the trial from the beginning, she did not show that she was unbiased. Clearly, she's hugging the prosecutors and not hugging the defense. She shouldn't have picked a side from the beginning until the end. And I understand it was painful for her, but I felt that she did the most in showing the pain she felt for the families and it overstepped the bounds of what the judiciary's role is in a situation like this. All right, let's go to our next comment. It comes from Lisa. Lisa says, as an Irish person looking on at this spectacle, I've never seen anything like it, but it must give these families some closure. And it's interesting, as you guys know, we do uh, air out in the UK and in Ireland. So interesting, Matthew, to get that perspective, what a spectacle it might look like to someone not used to that. Um, your thoughts on that comment? You know, I, I hate to see it for our own jurisprudence, but um, it's a good commentary. I think that a lot of times parts of this trial got out of hand, mm -hmm. right? A lot of a lot of these items could have been handled off record, sidebar. Yes. You could have held people in contempt of court without the backlash. If anything, I think you're actually uh, dispelling. You're kind of you know quieting down some of the noise, and you're focusing um, on the items. But you know what? Emotions are running high in this court, and that's what they're supposed to do. So yeah. I thought that that was good. I agree. I think a lot of it could have, could have been kept under wraps. All right, Marie, thank you so much for joining me. Matthew, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Coming up next, we review three things we've learned today. So keep it here on Court TV. You started today. Today has been a busy day here on Court TV Live, so here are three things that we've learned. First, a formal complaint letter from the Florida Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers has been sent to the chief judge of Broward County concerning Parkland Judge Elizabeth Shear. Now, her honor was presiding over the Nicholas Cruz death penalty case when there was a confrontation between her and Cruz's attorneys. The letter suggests the lawyers were treated like misbehaving children. 
Second, Johnny Depp is appealing Amber Heard's $2 million counterclaim victory. Heard was ordered to pay more than $10 million to Depp back in June for defaming her ex-husband in a 2018 Washington Post op-ed about domestic abuse. Well, Depp argues he shouldn't be held liable for his lawyer's statements, which a jury found were defamatory toward Heard. And third, a death-qualified jury has been selected in the math teacher murder trial. We're going to bring you coverage of Florida versus Matthew Terry, starting with opening statements on Monday morning at 9 Eastern. Terry is charged with the violent murder of Kay Baker. All right, I'm Michael Ayala. It's been a pleasure being with you tonight. Thank you so much for being with me. Coming up next, the FBI files. Then ahead at 8 p.m. Eastern, tune into Closing Arguments. Vinny Politan talks to the son of Debbie Collier. Remember, she's the Georgia mom who was found mysteriously murdered in a wooded area after, ban after banishing from her home. It's an interview that you do not want to miss, folks. Keep it right here on your front row seats of justice.